Hey guys, it's Heather from Calva Plan, and if you hadn't heard, I recently went to Disney World with my family. So today I am making a video just sharing my tips and tricks of how I planned our Disney World vacation. And if you are headed to Disney World, I hope that maybe some of my tips and tricks can help you. I want to specify that I am not a Disney pro by any means. And this was actually my first time to go to Disney World in about 13 years. Before this trip, the last time I had gone was my senior year of high school in 2005. So it's been quite a while since I have been to the magical land of Disney World. But it was so much fun when we went last week and I just wanted to hop on, share how I use my planners to plan this trip for my family as well as some other things that I did to help plan this vacation. So I hope that it will help some of you if you are trying to plan a trip to Disney World as well. Of course, I'm wearing my Minnie Mouse ears and a LuLaRoe Minnie Mouse Randy tee because to get in the spirit of this video. One little tip is the Minnie Mouse ears. These ears are actually from Charming Charlie's. They had this exact pair at Disney World for $25, except the ears weren't, these are like padded with cotton and they're kind of fluffy. Um, the, the ones at Disney World, the ears look a little bit different. They're more um, firm, I guess. And the headband isn't quite as stretchy. So these at Charming Charlie's were $12. The ones at Disney World were $25. I personally think these are way more comfortable than the ones at Disney World because I have the rose gold ones from Disney World and the headband's not as stretchy. I have a big head and it just wasn't quite as comfortable. So I definitely like these better and I think I'm going to go buy the ro rose gold pair because I go to Disneyland next week and I, I just think I want the rose gold ones because they were a lot more comfortable than the rose gold ones from actual Disney World. Plus they were half the price. So that is one little tip. Check out Charming Charlie's for your mini ears before you leave. Um, so little backstory. I went to Disney World with part of my family. So um, it, I went to the University of Alabama. My little brother works for the University of Alabama. He works in the marketing athletic department. And so he had asked us several months ago, hey, do y'all want me to get y'all tickets for the kickoff game? Because Alabama kicked off their football season in Orlando. And we were like, yeah, let's do it. That sounds awesome. And then my dad was like, hey, I'm going to come. What if we go to Disney World too and turn it into your it can be our Chris, my Christmas present to y'all. And we're like, sure, let's do it. So we all flew in. It was a shorter trip. We did not go for a whole week. If you can go for more than three days, I highly suggest it. We went for three days and we were not able to fit everything in to those three days. So I wish that we had gone for five days. If we had gone for five days, I probably would have done two days in the parks, a day off, two days at the park, the football game. That's what I would have done if I could do it again and if we had had more time and more money. So... The first thing I went with my dad, my husband, my twin sister and her husband and their two-year-old daughter, my little brother and his wife and their four-year-old daughter. So there was a total of nine of us, which was a really big group. It was kind of stressful planning it for everyone and keeping everyone together and on schedule and on the same page. And it was super stressful. I don't really suggest going with a group of nine unless you just have to. Um, so one of the first things that my family had to decide was where we were going to stay. So we looked at staying at a Disney resort versus renting a house. And there's obviously tons of pros to staying in a Disney resort. And there's a lot of them that are super affordable. My vote was for the Disney resort. My sister and my brother voted for a house. Um, their reasoning was that they have daughters and they kept saying, we could put them to bed and still hang out at night downstairs all together. And so we went with the house. Um, once we were there, we really, 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 really wished we had done a Disney resort. Um, the main reason we did the house was because everyone still wanted to hang out together after the kids went to bed. And that would have been a little more difficult in a resort because you can't just leave your kid alone in the hotel room. But by the time we got home from the parks, honestly, we were really, really tired. And so we didn't do a lot of hanging out at night. So it, I think that staying in a resort would have been a lot more beneficial because it would have been easier to get to the parks. Sometimes it's a pain to drive to Disney World, park, pay for parking, which is extra money. Um, depending on what park you're at, you may have to ride a monorail to get still get to the park. Um, so that alone was a pain and we wish we could have just like hopped on a bus or a monorail to get to the parks. And it was also those extra magic hours. I think we, we would have really loved those, especially the morning ones. And we also talked about how it would have been really nice to have been able to just hop on the bus, take the girls home for a nap, leave my dad there with them, get back on the bus and the us adults could have come back. 
Um, but, but when we drove, it was, it was a lot more work to go to the car, drive all the way to the house, drop them off, drive all the way back. It was just a lot. So if we all talked about it and we had said if we could do it again, we would stay in a Disney resort. We think that it would have been worth the money. So that's our opinion on where to stay. We, we stayed in a house that was in a neighborhood about, it was probably about 10 minutes from Disney World. It was a really great location. There were a lot of rental houses there. Um, but I think that the resort would have just been better for us. And Matthew and I have already said that when we have kids someday and we go to Disney World, we will stay in a resort hands down. We won't even think about it. We will stay on property. We think it will totally be worth it. Also, if you stay on property, you get to book your fast passes 60 days in advance. If you stay off property, you get to book them 30 days in advance. So I also think that would have been another nice thing is booking those fast passes in advance. So now we're gonna talk about fast passes. Um, if you don't know about fast passes at Disney World, you need to know about them. Like on one of our days, we were in line for one of the Avatar rides and a lady, we were in the fast pass line and a lady in the regular line was like, oh, I heard something about these fast passes. Should I be using these? And we're like, you haven't used any of your fast passes? Yes, you should be using them. Um, basically you get to book three in advance and you just walk up to the fast pass line and you get in line and you ride the ride and it's way faster. Once you use those three for the day, you can book one more. Once you book that one, you can book another one. When you use that one, you can book another one and so on. <clears throat> it really, really helps with time being able to use those fast passes. So before I booked our fast passes, I did a lot of research. I, I read a ton of blogs. I watched a ton of YouTube videos and I took my happy planner and I made lists for each park of what rides you should fast pass and which rides you should fast pass like the day that you're there. So here in the Magic Kingdom, I listed the things that would be good to fast pass ahead of time and the things that you can fast pass the day of or you may not even need a fast pass for them. I did the same thing for the other three parks and then that way when it was time for 30 days in advance, it was time for me to log in and book my family's fast passes. I had this list and I knew what I wanted and what my game plan would hopefully be. And that really, really helped me to have a visual of what rides I really wanted to get fast passes for and which rides were would have been a waste of time. Now, one other thing that really helped my family is my dad has really bad arthritis and he also has a knee injury that he's had to have surgery for. And so he, the first day we got there, he went to City Hall on Main Street at the Magic Kingdom. And he, that's like where the customer service is. And so he told them about his injury and I think he might've had to show doctor paperwork, I'm not really sure. And he got what is called a disability something service. It's DAS was the acronym and basically that he then added everyone in his party onto that and what that basically meant was he could go to any ride tell them he had a disability pass and they would give him a fast pass they'd scan his um magic band give him a fast pass for to come back with whatever the current wait time was so if the wait time was 35 minutes he would get a fast pass on the app to come back in 35 minutes. So that really helped us hit a lot of things. It helped my dad not to have to wait in line and stand on his bad knee for a long time, which was awesome for him. And then it helped the rest of us because we we could go to one part of the park and I could get, we would have a fast pass maybe at Splash Mountain and Pirates of the Caribbean is right next to it. And so we're on our way to Splash Mountain. My dad would get his DAS for Pirates of the Caribbean. We would go fast pass Splash Mountain. By the time we were done, we could use the, the DAS fast pass for Pirates of the Caribbean. And so we did that with a lot of the passes and it, we were able to get through a lot more rides because of that DAS pass. Now, obviously you don't want to like lie to get a DAS pass just to benefit yourself. But if someone in your party does have a disability like that be sure to tell customer service because it definitely helped us hit a lot more rides um also we had a lot of issues with our photo pass so my dad so you in disney world you could pay for a photo pass and it links to your whole party that you're with 
And then every time you get a picture made with someone from the Disney staff, the Disney photographers, they scan your magic band and it shows up on the app, which is awesome. We used it a ton the second and third day. We really wish we had used it more the first day. But that first day we were having major issues with it. My dad had paid for it, but it wasn't showing up. Our pictures weren't showing up. It was a big mess. And so when we were leaving the park that first day, we stopped back by the customer service at City Hall to see if they could help us figure it out. And because of these issues, we had to talk to them for quite a while. They finally got it fixed, but they ended up giving us these walk-up, um, I think they called them magic experiences or something like that. It was basically a walk-up pass to three rides for Thursday and three rides for Friday, which was also really awesome. There were certain rides we couldn't use it on, like we couldn't use it on the Seven Dwarfs Mine Train at Magic Kingdom. We couldn't use it on Avatar at Animal Kingdom. We couldn't use it on any of the Toy Story stuff at Hollywood Studios. So there were some restrictions, but um, it was that was also a really awesome way for us to get through things. Again, I'm not saying you should go complain about things just to get these free passes. Um, I don't think we were really complaining. We were just there trying to get it fixed and they try to make everything right. And so they gave it to us. Um, they just gave it to us as a way to say sorry for this mess today. So those are the fast passes. So 30 days in advance, I logged on to the app and I got fast passes for my family. At Magic Kingdom, I got us fast passes to the two to the three mountains. So we had Space Mountain, Splash Mountain, and Thunder Mountain. At the next day, we went to Hollywood Studios and we fast passed um, Star Tours, Toy Story Mania, and rock and roller coaster those were the three things that we fast passed at hollywood studios and then the third day we went to animal kingdom and there we fast passed the safari expedition everest and the river journey in pandora in the avatar land so those were our fast passes and then what i did i have a video where i made this hourly sheet planning out our disneyland or disney world trip and um I then filled in, oops, sorry. So here's like the hourly thing. So up here I listed snacks that we wanted to do, rides that we definitely wanted to do, and then the park hours. And then down here, because we base, our goal was to basically hit two rides every hour. We felt like if we could do that, we could hit a lot of things. And so this is the hourly planner. And so I basically just wrote in two things for every hour. And when I made this plan, I had up a map of the park because that also really helped me to look at a map of the park because I, again I hadn't been in like 13 years so I couldn't really remember where certain rides were and how close they were to each other so that really helped me to be able to say um like Peter Pan's flight is right across from Small World so we should do those back to back and so that was really helpful in planning where we were going to be and when we were going to be there. And then, so I made this for me because I'm a paper planner. I'm a happy planner through and through. And so this is what worked for me. But I wanted to be able to share this with my family because I wanted them to be able to look at the schedule. Let me know if there's anything that I needed to rearrange or if there were any rides that they definitely wanted to do that I, maybe I missed or rides that they thought the girls might not like and that we needed to change. So then basically after I made this schedule, I then put it just in a Google spreadsheet and shared it with my family so that they had access to it as well. So that is how I planned our trip. I will post a picture of this plan on my Instagram account, Kel of a Plan, Instagram.com slash Kel of a Plan, in case you want to watch that or in case you want to see a better breakdown of our days. Um, we did not stay for any of the nighttime shows, the fireworks, the laser shows, anything like that. Mainly because we had a two-year-old and a four-year-old and we were lucky that they wouldn't make it till six or seven every night. And then at that point, we had to go. We also did not have any reservations for lunch or dinner, mainly because we wanted to fit those in whenever it worked best for our schedule. So for lunch, whenever everyone was hungry, we would just shoot into a cafeteria and just eat the the basic food. And then for dinners, we, we at the time we weren't really sure how long the girls were gonna last. And so we didn't wanna have a dinner scheduled at 7.30 and then them not, like them just be over it and miss the dinner. So we didn't do dinners or lunches, but we did have two character breakfasts. 
The first day we did the Disney Junior Breakfast at Hollywood Studios because the girls are two and four. And so those Disney Junior shows, those characters, that's who the girls are just loving right now. And so they loved that. They, they were able to see Jake the Pirate, Sophia the First, Doc McStuffins, and Goofy. So those were the four characters at that character breakfast. And I think it was about $35 a person to eat at that breakfast. It was a buffet. It was in Hollywood Studios, and it was pretty good. We liked it. Of course, the kids loved it. The characters come to your table. You're able to take pictures with them, and the girls just loved it. They thought it was amazing. And then this is a tip that I really wanted to throw out there is um, the princess breakfast at Epcot. That's what we did on Friday. It's a princess breakfast that's in Norway in Epcot, and first off, the breakfast was amazing. We booked it for 9.15. The park opened at 9, so... Because we had a breakfast, we you're allowed to go into the park early if you have a breakfast. So we went into the park at about 8.45, even though our breakfast wasn't until 9.15. We went ahead and walked to Norway. We made sure that our reservation was good. They told us, yes, you're here. Your name's on the list. We have everything we need. Come back right at 9.15 to check in. Well, at this point, it's about 8.50. So we have about 25 minutes and the park hasn't opened yet. But Norway is where the Frozen ride is. And our my nieces are obsessed with Frozen. And normally that, that ride has a really long wait. And we weren't able to fast pass it because when you fast pass things, you have to fast pass them all in one park. And we were only going to Epcot for the breakfast and to ride the Frozen ride. And then we were leaving for the Animal Kingdom. And then we were coming back later for the Food and Wine Festival. So we didn't want to use our fast passes there. We wanted to use our fast passes at Animal Kingdom. So we didn't have any fast passes at Epcot. But the breakfast was right next to the Frozen ride. So it's 8.50 and we don't have to be back until 9.15. So we just got in line for the Frozen Ever After ride at 8.50 before the rope had even dropped at the front of the park. And pretty much everyone else that was in line were also people who were there for a breakfast. So they actually opened the ride at about 8.55. They opened it a few minutes early and we all were able to just walk right up, get on a boat and ride the ride, which that ride was so cute. And so... That and then we got off the ride. We were able to even shop in the little uh, frozen shop souvenir shop right after the ride. And then we went to our breakfast right at 9 15 and it was perfect. So the girls loved the frozen ride. And so before we even walked into the breakfast, my dad went back up there and got one of his DAS passes for the frozen ride so that we could ride it as soon as breakfast was over so that they actually got to ride it twice, which they loved. And then we went and met on an Elsa, which was a pretty short line that day, that morning, thankfully. And then we headed over to the animal kingdom. So that is a tip that I definitely wanted to share. Another just funny story that I wanted to share is, um, be sure to know how you are going to get from park to park. I didn't really research that. I just had assumed that it would be fairly easy to figure out how to get from one park to another when you were park hopping. And so on Thursday, we started at Hollywood Studios and then we were going back to the Magic Kingdom. And so that afternoon we're leaving and we're like, we're going to take the bus to the Magic Kingdom. And so we're walking out of the gate and me and my dad looked at this old man who was running the gate. I probably shouldn't call him an old man. That was probably rude. But anyway, we we're like, hey, which way to the buses to the Magic Kingdom? He was like, oh, you should take the boat. You should take the boat. It's it's more space. It's more comfortable. It's like a cool form of transportation. The kids will love it. Take the boat. So we took the boat. And if you know anything about Disney World, you're probably sitting here laughing at me right now because we went and waited in line. We get on the boat. We get our seat. We're all ready to go. And it's pulling off from the dock. And someone comes, the, the person who's driving the boat comes over the intercom and it's like, we're stopping at these three resorts. I don't remember what three it was. And then we'll be at Epcot. I'm looking at my family. And I'm like, we're not, we're not going to Epcot. We're supposed to go to Magic Kingdom. So the man at the gate obviously was not paying attention to what we said. Or he did not know better. And he put us on a boat to Epcot. So we had to get off at the first resort. And wait on a bus, which took forever. And so what should have taken us maybe 20 minutes to, Magic, to get back to Magic Kingdom took us over an hour. So, not a good idea. Be sure to know how to get from park to park. And another tip would be when on Thursday when we were at Magic Kingdom, the girls got really tired, they were ready to go. 
But me and Matthew weren't really tired. We wanted to stay in the Magic Kingdom a little bit longer, but the rest of my family was ready to go. And again, we weren't staying in a resort. We had rented a house. And so Matthew and I didn't have a car. My dad had rented a car. My brother-in-law had rented a car. So we had just been riding with them. We didn't have our own car. And so my dad was like, it's fine. I'll come back and get y'all whenever y'all are done. But at the Magic Kingdom, you can't just pull up to the park and pick someone up. You have to go to the parking lot and then ride the monorail. And it's like this whole big shebang just to get out of the Magic Kingdom. And so Matthew and I, when we decided we were ready to go, we actually rode the boat to the Polynesian Resort, which was fun just to get out on that little lake that they have there. Fun little boat ride. We rode it to the Polynesian. We were able to just kind of walk around and explore the Polynesian Resort. And then my dad just pulled up right in front of that resort to pick us up when we were ready. So that was a little, and that was honestly probably easier for him to get into the resort as well than to worry about getting back into the parking. So that's another little tip. So I can't really think of anything else that I really need to share with you guys today. We had a blast. If you have any questions about planning a trip to Disney World, please leave your questions in the video. I will do my best to help. And if you have any tips about Disneyland, I leave for Disneyland next week and I've never, never, ever been there. So if you have any t tips about what rides I should ride or what snacks I should eat or anything about Disneyland, I would love to hear it in the comments. And yeah, if you like this video, I hope you hit the like button. If you want to see more of my videos, hit that subscribe button and happy planning.